Hello, thank you for listening. My name is Zoe Ruff. I'm a yoga and fitness instructor, as well as a certified holistic nutritionist. I've worked at Miyamo for 14 years, and I'm passionate about feeling my best and helping others feel their best. I'm excited to be here today to talk about boosting immunity for spring. With springtime comes longer days and warmer temperatures. This is my favorite time of year. It's nature's birthing season, a time of new beginning, inspiration, energy, power to act upon your ideas, creativity, and enthusiasm. This is a good time to look at your life and make a new plan. This is when we feel most like making resolutions or setting goals, not January 1st when it's cold and dark and we feel like hibernating. In Chinese medicine, spring is the time of the liver and gallbladder. The foods and practices I'll be talking about will support those organs. In Ayurveda, spring is the time of kapha, which embodies the elements of earth and water and the characteristics of heavy and wet. It's the nurturing mother energy. The kapha energy might make it harder to get up in the morning and might cause mucus buildup, but you can balance this out with lots of movement, breath work, and getting up right before sunrise. Now let's talk about the immune system. Your immune system protects your body from infectious germs, keeping you healthy. It is always at work, protecting you from infections and identifying and destroying harmful microorganisms, things that shouldn't be in your body. Your immune system also helps you build immunity so that when you encounter certain invading germs again, they are recognized and you can fight them faster the next time around, often without even getting sick at all. There are many things we can do to support our immune systems and can vary from season to season, which I will talk about today. So what can we do to boost our immunity for spring? Well, I love Hippocrates' philosophy of food as medicine. The food we eat plays a huge role in boosting the immune system. Spring is a good time to make some dietary changes. The body's ability to adapt to changing seasons hinges on the quality of the food we eat on a regular basis. Healthy food choices directly impact immune system functioning and gut health, which by the way, our gut houses 70 to 80% of the immune system. Making changes in your diet can go a long way towards staying healthy all year long. First off, I want to talk about hydration. Water helps produce lymph, which carries white blood cells and immune system cells. Drinking enough water ensures that your blood will carry plenty of oxygen to all of the cells in your body. Water also flushes out toxins and keeps the eyes and mouth moist and clean so that they can repel dirt, dust, and parasites that might cause infection essentially creating a barrier. It's best to drink room temperature water or warm because it's more hydrating than cold water as your body has to spend more energy to bring cold water to a temperature it can absorb, which results in water loss. Icy water can cause the blood vessels in your stomach to shrink slightly, hindering the digestion process and thus slowing hydration. Be especially mindful of this around meals. Ideally, you want to drink the majority of your water between meals instead of during. Water with meals dilutes the digestive juices and makes it harder to break down the food. If you need to sip a little water with your meals to wash it down, that's okay, but be careful to just drink a little. If you go into a meal already hydrated, this will be much easier. Drinking a good amount of water a half hour before a meal is fine and an hour or so after. You might want to track your water to make sure you're drinking enough. The rule of thumb is half your weight in ounces. So if you weigh 150 pounds, that's 75 ounces of water. That's actually the bare minimum. I personally feel much better when I drink more than that. Keep in mind that you need more water if you live in a dry or hot climate or if you're sweating. Caffeinated drinks and alcohol are dehydrating, so you'll need to drink more water to compensate for that. You can track your water with an app or just write it down or know how many bottles you're drinking. You can make water more palatable by adding lemon or lime, cucumber slices, ginger, berries, whatever you want. I also suggest taking water with you wherever you go, preferably in a glass or stainless steel bottle. Drinking water first thing in the morning is a must. Not only have you gone a long time without water, 
But as our bodies regenerate during the night, toxins are pushed out into the bloodstream. So we need to assist this process by drinking water to flush out the toxins or else they get reabsorbed. So hydrate first thing in the morning before you have a caffeinated drink. A wonderful habit to start is to drink hot water with lemon or lime. You can do this in the morning as well as during the day. The lemon or lime supports the liver, adds vitamin C and enzymes, and helps the cleansing process. You can add some raw honey if you like, which I do. Other beverages that are hydrating include herb teas like peppermint, dandelion, milk thistle, super supportive of the liver, or whatever herb teas you enjoy. Coconut water is extremely hydrating as it contains electrolytes. You can drink it straight or use it as a base in smoothies. And also watery fruits and vegetables provide lots of hydration. Speaking of fruits and vegetables, let's get into that. It's probably no surprise that eating plenty of fruits and veggies every day can work wonders for your immune system. The idea here is that more is better. Fruits and veggies are loaded with fiber, antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. It's important to rotate them, so not eating the same thing all the time. Yes, broccoli is great, but don't eat it every night at the expense of not eating other veggies. Try asparagus, artichokes, Brussels sprouts, something else. Eating seasonally ensures that you're getting variety throughout the year and the produce is at its freshest. The farmer's market is a great place to shop because the produce is local, meaning it was picked fresh, maybe even that morning. Freshly picked produce is higher in nutrients. Think about it. Produce that comes from another state or even another country was not picked at ripeness. If it was, it would be rotten by the time it gets to you. Growing your own garden or at least some herbs can be fun. It's just so satisfying to pick your own food and then eat it right away. Also, eating all the different colors is a great way to ensure you're getting lots of different vitamins from your food. So for spring, we want to eat a high fruit and vegetable-based diet, more raw, lighter foods, and fewer meats and dairy. You may notice that this is what you're naturally craving. Some wonderful spring fruits are berries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, apricots, apples, mangoes, pears, citrus, so lemons, limes, oranges, grapefruit, kiwi, pineapple, melon, cherries, figs, nectarines, papaya, and rhubarb. Some wonderful spring veggies include cabbage, which is loaded with fiber and vitamin C. Cabbage is great because it lasts a long time in the fridge. You can even shred it up ahead of time and have it ready to go for salads, wraps, whatever. Leafy greens are incredible for us. These include lettuces, Swiss chard, spinach, collard greens, kale. You can make salads, use them in smoothies, wraps, burritos, sandwiches. Sometimes I put a bunch of raw greens at the bottom of my plate or bowl and then pile my hot meal on top of it. If you notice your greens in the fridge are starting to go bad, just freeze them before they go bad. And then you can use them later in smoothies or even soups. Dandelion greens, arugula, and watercress are also amazing greens that are perfect for spring as they are stringent, cleansing, and supportive of the liver. They can be bitter, but you don't need a lot. So try mixing a little dandelion, arugula, or watercress into soups, salads, wraps, smoothies. I mentioned dandelion tea earlier. It's delicious. Sprouts are one of the easiest ways to get a lot of nutrients into your body. They're like 50 times more nutritious than the fully grown plant. You can choose sunflower sprouts, which are actually really good just to munch on on their own, broccoli sprouts, kale sprouts, alfalfa sprouts, you name it. You can get them at the store or a farmer's market or even grow your own. I use this kit by Hamama. I actually have two of them, so while one is still sprouting, I have one ready to eat. Other spring veggies include green beans, which have vitamin K and lots of minerals. You can stir fry them or steam them and toss them with garlic. They're also good raw on their own or dipped in hummus. More spring veggies that are very liver supportive are artichokes. If you have an instant pot, they cook in 11 minutes. Asparagus, garlic, onion, carrots, broccoli, snap peas, radish, fennel, 
green onion, beets and beet tops, bell peppers, which are loaded with vitamin C, and parsley. Vitamin A rich foods are important for spring because they help keep mucous membranes in the nose and throat healthy. Vitamin A foods include carrots, sweet potatoes, spinach, broccoli, and red bell peppers. Mushrooms are also great because they contain vitamin D. Shiitake and maitake are delicious as well as portobello, but any mushrooms are great. Medicinal mushrooms are also incredible for the immune system. For thousands of years, medicinal mushrooms have been used across cultures to help boost immunity and fight off colds and flus. Medicinal mushrooms can help with your body's immune response by working to strengthen and support its natural defense processes. Medicinal mushrooms include reishi, lion's mane, chaga, turkey tail, and cordyceps. A blend might be best. You can purchase these in capsules, tinctures, which is a liquid form, or powders. I've got an array of medicinal mushroom powders in my kitchen. I use them in smoothies and make drinks out of them. If you drink coffee, they blend really well into coffee. I make this amazing beverage with dandelion powder. I use the brand Dandy Blend, chaga mushroom powder, honey, and nut milk. It has a coffee-like taste, but no caffeine and tons of benefits to the immune system and liver. Another powerful immune-boosting food is garlic. It has antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal properties, which can help the body resist or destroy viruses. More specifically, garlic contains allicin, a potent compound that enhances immune resistance. I came across a large 12-week study that found a daily garlic supplement reduced the number of colds by 63% compared to a placebo, and the average length of cold symptoms was also reduced by 70% from five days in the placebo group to just one and a half days in the garlic group. Garlic is also delicious and enhances any food it's added to. You can put garlic in salad dressing, sauces, soups, stir fries, pretty much anything you're cooking. Or if you don't like the taste of garlic, you can use a garlic supplement. Ginger is another powerful immune boosting food. It's antibacterial and antiviral. It cleanses the lymphatic system, rids the body of toxins, cleanses the colon, and fights inflammation and infection. Ginger is warming and increases circulation. Ginger is also incredible for any stomach upset. It's great for digestion. You can use it in cooking, just like you would use garlic. In tea, you can add it to your morning hot water with lemon. Just cut thin slices and pour boiling water over it and let it sit for like 10 minutes. You can also juice it and take a shot. And lastly, spices are great this time of year. They enhance digestion so that you get the most benefit from the foods you're eating. Oregano is antioxidant, antibacterial, and antiviral, so make sure you're using this spice while cooking. Cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, cumin, coriander, and turmeric are also wonderful spices for immunity and overall health. So I've talked a lot about food. What is best, raw or cooked? I make sure to include a combination of raw and cooked foods in my diet, but you can do whatever feels best to you. Some people have a hard time digesting raw veggies, so if that's the case, stick with more cooked. If you just prefer the taste of cooked and that gets you to eat them, then do that. It's difficult comparing the healthiness of raw and cooked veggies because although a raw veggie might have 10% more vitamins and nutrients than a cooked veggie, a veggie you don't consume at all has 0% of the nutrients you need. So prepare it in a way that will get you to eat it. I can't go without talking about optimizing gut health. As mentioned earlier, 70 to 80% of our immune system is in the gut. We need lots of fiber from fruit, veggies, whole grains, beans, legumes, nuts, and seeds to feed the good bacteria. Especially helpful to fuel the good bacteria are things like dandelion greens, garlic, onion, leeks, asparagus, apples, barley, oats, burdock root, flaxseed, seaweed, mushrooms, and jicama. These are known as prebiotic foods. Probiotic or fermented foods are also great for adding these beneficial bacteria to our guts. 
Things like unpasteurized sauerkraut or kimchi found in the refrigerated section, miso, tempeh, kefir or yogurt. You can even get non-dairy versions. Also kombucha and probiotic supplements, all of which can help restore the healthy bacteria of the microbiome. For a healthy gut, we need to avoid pesticides. So please buy organic food. Processed foods, which are high in sugar and chemical additives and preservatives. Avoiding antibiotics found in animal products. So look for antibiotic free versions of meat and dairy. Chlorinated water messes up the gut. And diet sodas or artificial sweeteners. Stevia and monk fruit are good options, but stay away from all the artificial sweeteners. Now I wanna share some tips to help you get more fruits and veggies into your amazing body. Eat fruit in the morning or as a snack. Fruit actually digests better by itself or in a smoothie with greens is fine. Smoothies, not freezing cold, let them warm up a little. Loaded with fruit and greens, kale and spinach are very mild so taste good in a smoothie. Snack on veggies and hummus. Prep the veggies ahead of time. Add banana, raisins, or goji berries to hot cereal. Bananas and dried fruit are exceptions to the eat fruit alone rule because they digest a little slower. Green juices, make your own or buy from a good juice shop. Use spaghetti squash or zucchini spirals instead of pasta or a combination of them. Have both raw and cooked veggies with dinner. Fill up at least half your plate with these. Soups loaded with veggies are delicious, warming, and easy to digest and can be frozen for another time. Eat one huge salad every day. This could be lunch, dinner, or even as a snack. Roasted or baked veggies are yummy. This brings out the flavor. It's easy. You can have leftovers for the next day. Frozen fruits and veggies are very convenient. They're picked fresh and flash frozen, so the nutrients are still there. Shop at a farmer's market. This can be a fun way to feel connected to the farmer and know that it's fresh and nutritious. Trying something new. Each time you shop, buy something you've never tried or haven't had in a while. Keep out a fruit bowl already washed. Make a list of the fruits and veggies you have in the fridge and look at it every time you're going to prepare a snack or meal and cross off as you go. Meal plan and prep food ahead of time. This makes it so much easier and you're less inclined to make unhealthy choices when you're hungry. Let someone else do the prep work by produce already washed and cut. Set a goal. Print a habit planner from online or use a chart for motivation. There's something about checking it off that keeps you on track. And lastly, build up slowly. Add one extra serving of fruits or veggies a day, an apple a day. And when you're used to that, then add another serving. Now let's get into some practices we can incorporate for spring, and really any time, to stay our healthiest. First of all, we are meant to move our bodies. Energy creates energy. If you are feeling sluggish, you need to exercise. It sounds counterintuitive, I know. You may not be exercising because you feel like you don't have the energy, but you have to force yourself at first and then you will see how this works. Exercise gives us energy. Aim for around 30 minutes or more a day. This could be taking a walk or a class or a YouTube video. It could be dancing, swimming, stretching, jumping on a trampoline or rebounder, whatever you like. If you're not doing anything right now, maybe start with five to 10 minutes a day. Exercise also promotes cell circulation and offers a range of health benefits. Exercise gets the blood pumping. This allows your immune system's white blood cells to circulate quicker, which helps germs and viruses from developing into colds and flus. Exercise also causes the brain to release endorphins, the feel-good chemicals that promote feelings of calm and contentment, which is also great for immune system. Another helpful practice is tongue scraping. This is actually an Ayurvedic practice. You can buy a very inexpensive tongue scraper online or at your health food store. 
It's usually stainless steel, so it lasts forever. You basically drag it along your tongue from the back to the front and then rinse it and do it a few more times. It takes about 10 seconds. It removes bacteria and toxins from your mouth. You'll probably see a white film on the tongue scraper. It's very satisfying. I do this practice every morning as well as brush my teeth before I drink any water. Another practice, another Ayurvedic practice is dry skin brushing. You can buy a dry skin brush or maybe you have one but use it wet in the shower. Using it dry before your bath or shower is best. It stimulates lymph and detoxification. Basically, you brush your skin toward the heart. So if you're brushing your arms or legs, you move up. Be very gentle on the chest and don't brush your face. I like adding essential oils to the brush for a lovely experience. We also need to get some sun, especially this time of year. If you're like me, I don't enjoy being outside when it's cold. You may have been a bit cooped up during the winter. Sun helps your body produce vitamin D in the skin, which boosts the immune system. Getting some sun also elevates mood and helps the quality of sleep, which helps us stay healthy. So a little sun, even 10 to 15 minutes daily for some people, is important. If you don't want to get sun on your face, use non-toxic sunblock or wear a hat. Now let's talk about sleep. I think we're all aware these days how important sleep is. It's very tangible. You get immediate feedback. When you sleep well, not too much, not too little, you feel good and have energy. It allows immune cells to regenerate. If you can fall asleep around 10 p.m. or at least not too late, that is most beneficial for our bodies. It's also important to limit alcohol. Alcohol suppresses the immune system, interferes with sleep, and burdens the liver. You don't have to give it up completely, but be mindful of why you are drinking. Is it just a habit? You can replace it with another beverage that's healthy and will contribute to your well-being. Are you drinking to shift your mood? That's something to look at. What you do once in a while will not have a huge negative impact. It's what you do on a regular basis that creates either good health or not. And last but not least, let's talk about stress. Many studies show that stress, especially long-term chronic stress, suppresses immune activity. Stress causes a release of the hormone cortisol, which can boost inflammation, a precursor to many diseases. Some tips to lessen stress are learn to say no, you don't have to do it all. Make sure you're breathing deeply. Feel your emotions instead of pushing them away. Meditate, exercise, eat well, journal, use positive affirmations, get organized, nurture yourself, and get out in nature. I thank you so much for listening, and I hope this was helpful. If you can just start incorporating one of these tips into your life, that would be amazing. We are meant to feel good, have lots of energy, and fight off whatever our bodies come in contact with. Wishing you a healthy day.